Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's video I have something really fun for you guys. We are going to create this coffee uh, looking website and I used Adobe Photoshop to create my own blend of coffee using some mockups I found on Envato Elements and the end result looks like this. So all of this is going to move into place and we're going to use some basic but nice looking animations and if I switch it back one more time and click right here to show you, you can see that all the text layers are moving into place as well as all of these other elements like coffee, like beans and leaves. So let's get started. All right, so to get started, I have this practice file prepared already and you can get this practice file in my membership. Membership contains all of the practice files for these YouTube videos alongside all of the courses, design products, mentorship and private access to the Facebook group. So if you're interested, link is going to be down in the description below so you can join and get all of these files which I mentioned. If not, you can simply follow along this tutorial using your own resources. Now, all of these images and all of those mockups which I showed you are from Envato Elements and I'm going to also link it down in the description below if you want to check out that um, compilation of all of those elements which I have created I'm going to leave the link to the collection in question down in the description below if not you can simply find some free resources online and simply combine them to get the results similar to this so to get started, I have a 1920 by 1080 artboard and I have my grid like this. So 12 columns, 60 for the gutter width, 87 for the column width and finally 108 for the margins left and right. So to get started, uh, I also did this. So instead of pure white, I used FFFEFC. So just a slightly darker version of white color so that it's not purely white. What I have done is I use this background texture and what I'm going to do is position it roughly around here and let me scale it like this. Something like this. I think that looks fine. What I'm going to do is instead of this normal blend mode, I'm going to use the blend mode called difference. So this one it's going to turn it into pure black, but we are going to also reduce the opacity to 14 like this and now we're going to get this nice looking gray sort of color which i think it's going to look quite fine now let's drag and drop our logo into place which is also from Envato elements for this example and i'm going to uh, move it into place like this one two three four same like i always do for these tutorials so 40 pixels from the top what i'm going to do is create a text layer i'm going to type in coffee and i'm going to use open sans 18 which is in this one. I can click on it one more time and it's semi bold. And I also have this font, which is Bebas new for the title. What I'm going to do is put this into group control G. I'm going to call it nav and I'm going to include a stack. And what this is going to allow me to do now when I hit control D is going to place another copy right here. So blends for this one. And let's actually select these two and make sure we are uh, going from the left, uh, so left aligned. Blends, flavors, like this, control D. I'm going to include roasts, profiles for different profiles of coffee, and finally, about if they want to learn more about this company. What I'm going to do is close it and in my stack, I'm going to put the spacing of 80. Then I'm going to select these two, make sure that they are in the center, 40 from the top like this. And I'm simply going to nudge this over to here. Put both of them in a group, call it navigation and call it a day. Next up, I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to type in that text. So rich coffee blend in every cup like this and I'm going to use this so Bebas new like this position it to here and I'm going to make a duplicate of it and then use open sense 24 like this and I'm going to uh, copy my original text paste it in right here and I'm going to make sure to position it for example 40 like this then i'm going to make a duplicate and simply use open sans 24 once again but i'm going to use this one and i'm going to type in uh, find your flavor 
and instead of regular this is as you can see a font weight of semi bold now i'm going to use my uh, rectangle tool to create a button and once again this is simply going to be a regular sort of button so let's go with three columns wide let's go with 80 in height so 381 uh, with 80 and i'm going to simply around the corners to 10 for example just so that i have this nice looking uh, button i'm going to call it btn like that and i'm going to group these two call it btn as well position it right here put this right here and call this group text position it just below my navigation and finally jump inside of these select these two position them right this and what i can do is make sure that i am for example 80 like this just so i give myself a bit more space now one more thing i'm going to do is uh, create that highlight which goes behind my text and you can put that in uh, this folder but if you want to include a stack for example for this group of text then this is not going to work quite well so uh, what i like to do is if you have to use the stack for example i want to put them 100 uh, perfectly from each other then i would simply recommend to put that highlight just below and behind this main text so once again i'm going to use my rectangle and for this highlight i'm going to position it roughly around here Make sure that i use this color make sure that i go without any border click right here and then let's see go with this so 10 and 10 right here so if i hover you can see that this one is uh top left corner radius and this is the bottom right corner radius so these two are going to have rounded corners and i'm going to come a little bit closer and i'm going to include these dimensions so 283 with 57 and once again this is just uh plane to something like here, like this for example and i'm going to call it highlight hey designer sorry to interrupt myself but i just wanted to quickly mention that you can get this practice file alongside every course and product i have ever made in my membership you can get this practice file if you want to follow along this and every future video i make link is going to be down in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested now let's get back to the video and put it behind my text like this now you can obviously play around with the position uh, do whatever you want with it but i think this is going to be just fine next up what i want to do is make sure that i position this perfectly from my navigation so what i'm going to do is actually because we don't have any stack and i decided to go without any stack for this tutorial i'm going to actually put it just behind uh, of my original text and this is going to make it much more uh, simpler to move around i'm going to use a rectangle tool just to create a nice looking rectangle like this and then simply select my text and that rectangle and position it right there what's that uh, uh, going to allow me is to position it perfectly in the center between my bottom edge of my logo and the bottom edge of my artboard itself so now comes the fun part we are actually going to start creating these elements right here so i have my circle i'm going to create it like this and i already prepared uh, this gradient so basically it's playing around from this color and um, center color is uh, because this is a radial gradient center color is a bit lighter and we lower the opacity down to 31 percent and basically i'm going to put it right here and for the dimensions let's go with uh, something smaller so seven six eight with seven six eight for example just like that and i'm also going to make sure that i use my rectangle once again to something like this and i'm going to move this edge over select these two click right here to make sure that this is in the center what i'm also going to do is i'm going to nudge it over to the right because i don't found it uh, to be great like this i'm not going to go all the way to here but i'm going to simply nudge it to roughly around here and as you can see i already prepared my components so i have my coffee bag i have my coffee cup and i'm going to put my bag to roughly around this place I'm going to put my cup to somewhere around here now this is just uh, to create uh, the visual interest for these elements but you can obviously create it however you want and do whatever you want with it and as I said I'm going to leave the link to the Envato elements uh, elements which are used to create in these mockups and you guys obviously can create any kind of design that you want so for these ones 
I'm going to drag and drop these leaves into place like this and now play around with them. So this one I want to position to, uh, right here and because we don't need a grid anymore, I'm going to uh, hide it just so it doesn't distract us from our design. So I'm going to put this right around here. And once again, you can play around with all of these elements. Maybe I can put this right here. Maybe I can put this leaf right here at the top, move it just a little bit to something like this. And I want this leaf to cover the bottom of my bag. So I'm going to put it right here. Now I'm going to jump back to my layers panel and I'm going to select this, this and my uh, circle. So let's call it circle. And I'm going to place them in a group and call it elements like that. And these are just going to be decorations basically with all of these coffee beans. So let me try to put them all uh, right around here. It, yeah, it does work like that. You just have to go outside of your artboard. So I'm going to put them right around here and then simply play around with them, position them wherever I uh, found to be a good place for them. For example, roughly around here. Then this one can go right here in the center. This one can go maybe around here because it just goes to that side. This can go right here and this can finally go right around here to something like this. Now, obviously, as I said, you can play around with all of these elements, position them however you want. But I found that this is going to work just fine. Now that our design is basically completed, what I want to do is uh, use these elements, hit Control G and call it, for example, I don't know, coffee and leaves, just so that I know what they are. And for these elements, I'm going to leave them as they are right here. I'm going to organize these things a little bit better and position the text just above these elements. And basically at this stage, our design is completed. What I want to do now is basically um, prepare for my animation. And the only thing I have to do really is to put these elements, so coffee and leaves uh, inside of a mask. And to do that, I'm going to use this circle, control C, jump in right here, control V like that. And I'm going to position that circle just on top of all of them and make sure that it's way bigger than them to roughly around here. Next up, I'm going to select all of them using my shift key. You use then shift control M to mask them. And I'm going to simply call this mask so I don't lose any time. And I'm also going to hide these elements so they don't distract us from this. I'm still not going to do anything with this. I'm just going to leave it like this. But I just want to show you how it looks like once it's masked. These elements are going to stay the same. Nothing is going to change with them. Perhaps I can jump in and rotate this bag just slightly like this. And perhaps with this leaf right here, I can maybe move it and rotate it just slightly to roughly around here. So basically that's it. That's our design completed. What's, what comes next is this. So I'm going to duplicate this artboard. This is going to be our end state. So how it's going to look like once it's loaded and you can basically load it in two different ways. If you remember from the example which I showed you and let me quickly launch it once again so I can show you that. So as you can see, I'm triggering it on tap. So once I click the animation starts, what you can actually do is use a time trigger to trigger this once your visitor come to the comes to this website. But as I said, uh, it's much easier for me to use the tap trigger just to initiate this animation. If you're using time trigger with your client, make sure to tell them to wait because usually time trigger is going to load faster than your client can react. So perhaps you can include some kind of a delay like uh, four seconds or five seconds or something like this until the preview loads for your client. But usually what works best for me is this time trigger, uh, sorry, this tap trigger like you see right here. So on tap, everything is going to load. So we're going to actually uh, animate that and I'm going to show you how all of that works. It's going to be quite simple. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to play around with these elements because they are the simplest ones. So I'm going to move this all the way down to here, for example, this to here, this to here. And I'm also going to move this highlight just below my text so somewhere around here. And I'm going to lower all of them to 0% like that. 
but don't lower the entire folder, simply lower them as separate layers. Now next, I'm going to uh, use this bag. I'm going to move it roughly around here. And then I'm going to use this coffee mug and move it all the way down to here, depending of how big the effect you want to achieve. And I'm going to use my circle and lower down the opacity down to zero. Next up, I'm going to use all of these coffee beans and leaves and move them out of the way. So let's start with this one, move it right here and you can always rotate it, for example, just to introduce a bit more visual interest to your design like this. And I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to use this one, I'm going to rotate it. Same with this one, like so. Make sure I position this one perhaps a bit out of the way. This leaf is going to be like this and this leaf is going to be roughly like this. So now that all of that is completed, the what comes next is we need to prototype it. So click prototype. Just simply connect these two artboards like this. We're going to use tap auto animate easy and out and duration of three seconds because as I said, you want to show your clients how this animation is going to look like. So click right here to preview and once I tap anywhere, you can see the animation coming into place. Now, if you think that this is too strong, let me bring it back one more time because you can see where it starts. You can simply move it with the text, just make a small delay, but I'm not going to bother with it and waste your time. You can simply do whatever you want with it and explore what you want with it. So you can see how with just a few simple masks here and there with some opacity and with some ease in and out triggers and uh, transitions, you can see how everything can be uh, put into perspective and make it uh, sort of interesting for the viewer without any advanced animations. So thank you once again for watching this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to press that like button and make sure to subscribe. I upload er every single week on Adobe XD about passive income techniques, uh, how to make money as a designer and many other topics. So if you're interested in those sort of topics, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.